Hey, it's Patrick here from the garagebandguide.com. In this video, I'm going over the basics and sharing some more advanced things you can do with live loops in GarageBand iOS. Live loops were introduced to GarageBand iOS in January of 2016, designed to make it easy to create music like a DJ or electronic music producer. As well as letting you belt out some great sounding arrangements, there's a lot of useful customization options on offer here too. So let's dive in and take a closer look at Live Loops. To choose a loop template, tap Live Loops in the instrument browser. Now there are 11 templates available here, ranging from chill wave to hip hop to rock and everything in between. Tap on your desired template and the live loop grid will open. With a ton of arranged musical ideas that you can activate and manipulate in a couple of ways using Live Loop's cell system. Each loop exists in a cell in the Live Loop's grid. You can start or stop playback of individual cells by tapping them. or activate a whole column by tapping the arrow button at the bottom of the screen. Tapping different cells in a row will switch out from the currently playing cell while keeping in time with the rest of the grid. You can record your current live loop setup at any time by hitting the record button. This allows you to add it to a current project or just record your live loop session on its own. Now remember that all Apple loops are royalty free, so you could record and export a Live Loops composition, then use it in a commercial project for example, if you want, without risk of Tim Cook popping up to sue your ass. So even left at that, Live Loops is a super useful tool, but it has a lot more depth than you might think at first. You can record into an empty cell or record over an existing cell's contents by either double tapping on the cell or tapping the edit icon at the bottom left corner of the live loops screen. Tapping on a cell while in edit mode will bring up a menu which as well as allowing you to cut or copy the contents of an existing cell gives you a variety of other options. Loops opens GarageBand's loop browser allowing you to insert any available into a selected vacant cell. Record into cell opens up the audio recorder or the smart instrument associated with the cell's row. You can then record directly into the cell by hitting the record button and when you're done return to the live loops grid by tapping the grid icon. Edit allows you to edit an existing cell's contents in much the same way as you would edit a region using options like cut, paste and split. Editing a green loop allows you to change the notes in the cell just like you would edit notes in a green region. And settings allows you to adjust a wide variety of, surprise surprise, settings for the existing loop you have selected. You can fine tune everything here from the gain of your loop, how many beats it will play back for, whether it will loop when finished, to having it play in reverse or even the key it plays back in. Mm -hmm. 
So there you have it. That's a quick overview of how you can start getting to grips with live loops in GarageBand iOS. If you like this video, then hit the like button. I really do appreciate it and it really does help the channel out too. If you haven't subscribed already, then now is a great time to do so. We've got a ton of new GarageBand videos coming your way every single week. And make sure you click the little bell icon there to make sure that you don't miss a thing. I've been Patrick from thegaragebandguide.com and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.